I'm going to show you how to make the drawstring bag from Creative Kiwi. The version that I'm doing is the super cute rabbit one. It will be made in three hoopings, two with a 5x7 hoop and one with a 4x4 hoop for the ears. For this I'm going to be using no show mesh and for the ears I will be using wash away uh, stabilizer. I have a selection of threads, one of them with a matching bobbin for the ears, some masking tape, squizzers, some pins to stabilize my stabilizer in the hoop, my fabrics and batting cut to size. I've also got some cord for the drawstring and also some solvy topper because I'm using a fake fur called Pony and that will stop the stitching from sinking into the pile. I'm going to start by making the ears for my rabbit. So for this I'm using the 4x4 hoop, a layer of wash away stabilizer and then we're going to hoop this and pin it so that it stays nice and taut in the hoop. So take your pin, lay it on the inside hoop push it through your stabilizer and then bring it back round and through and that will anchor it. So now you want to pin that on all four sides. And that will keep your stitching nice and uh, firm. Load the ear file into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number one and that's going to give you your placement outline for your batting. Place your batting over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two. Trim away the excess batting from around the stitch lines. Now going to add your front fabric. I'm using um, a faux fur so it's got a pile so I will be adding some solvy which is like a plastic wash away stabilizer over the top. It's the type that we tell you not to use for hooping. So place your fabric over the outline of the ears making sure that if you're using anything with a nap like a fur that you've got it running in the right direction so I've got mine so that when you stroke it it's all smooth going downwards and then I'm just going to take that in place then I'm going to place my solvy on top and that's going to be stitched down with the fabric so I'm going to take that in place as well we're now going to stitch round number three and that's going to secure the fabric and the solvy in place. Make sure you've got a thread that will either blend or complement your fabric in your machine. So you want to use one, the colour that you're going to be doing the satin stitching in. And then you're going to stitch round number three. Load your thread colour for the inside of the ears into your machine. I've loaded pink and then you're going to stitch round number four. You're now going to add your backing fabric, so turn your hoop over, place your fabric making sure that it's up the right way on the back of your hoop and then you're going to tape it in place. Pop 
pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number five. I've loaded my thread that matches my fabric back into my machine for this round. You're going to trim away the excess fabric from around the edge of the stitch line both front and back of your hoop. So turn your hoop over. For the solvy, we're just going to tear that off and it will just come away from the stitch line. And then we can trim up the fabric. Making sure you've got a matching bobbin and thread loaded into your machine, you're now going to stitch round number six and that's going to do the satin stitching around the uh, border of the ears. You're now going to free your ears from the hoop, so turn your hoop over and then carefully trim around the edge of the stitch line taking care not to cut the stitching. So that's your ears stitched. We're now going to remove the last little bit of um, solvy and it should just pull out. I just Ease my scissors underneath, taking care obviously not to cut anything, and then you'll be able to just pull it off. And that's your ears complete. You can now put them aside for the minute. We're now going to do the back, so load the file for the back into your machine along with a thread that's going to match your fabric. Then you're going to hoop and pin your layer of no-show mesh. Uh, do it in exactly the same way as you did for the hooping for the ears. And then you're going to stitch round number one and that's going to give you your uh, fabric placement outline. Put a piece of paper underneath my hoop so that you can see my outline. You're now going to take your front fabric and you're going to place it over the outline and then you're going to tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two and that's going to secure your fabric to the hoop and it's also going to give you your placement outline for your casing. So the casing is going to line up with this line here and you want to place it so that the fold of your fabric, which is this side here, is facing in towards the middle and you want it halfway there so that the, these sides are going to fold inwards and we're going to open it out and then we're going to tape it in place. Now going to stitch round number three and that's going to do a line of stitching here to secure it to the hoop. Now that the casing secured to the hoop we're going to fold the sides in and thoroughly finger press them and then you're going to fold this up. If you find that you get a bulge when you fold this up put something flat there to fold it over and then pull it out 
and that will make it lay nice and flat and then you're going to secure it in place then you're going to take your backing fabric or should I say your lining fabric and you're going to place that face down over the top of your front fabric now you're going to secure that in place pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number four and that's going to secure your lining and the casing to the hoop and that's your back done for now so we can now free this from the hoop I've removed all the pins and tape next you're going to trim up the excess here just leaving a quarter of an inch all the way along this side of the stitch line and I'm going to trim down the stabilizer to the same size as my fabric as well so when you open this up you'll have your front your casing for your cord and there's the lining so you're going to want to press this so that it folds where the two fabrics join so that it folds over backwards like so so once your backing is pressed you can then set it aside so we're now going to do the front so load the file for the front into your machine along with the, the thread colour for your fabric hoop and pin your layer of um, no show mesh as you did in the previous hooping and then you're going to stitch round number one and that's going to give you your fabric placement outline again I've slipped a piece of paper under my hoop so that you can see my outline place your front fabric over the outline and tape it in place pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two and that's going to secure it and it's also going to give you your casing placement as well So line up your casing fabric, the fold to the stitch line of course and then open it out and then going to tape it in place pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three and that's going to secure it along the fold fold your edges of your casing over to where the stitch, the stitch line starts and finger press it thoroughly and then fold it upwards and then you're going to tape it in place place your lining fabric face down so right sides together over the top and tape it in place pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number four to secure them so that's your lining now secured so we're going to roll this up out the way and we want it to pull it right the way back here and I'm just going to pop a little clip on there just to hold it 
You're now going to stitch round number five and that's going to give your placement outline for your rabbit's head or your bear's head, whichever one you're doing. I've loaded a white thread into my machine for this because my fabric is going to be white so uh, I want it to match. I'm now going to stitch round number five. Place your batting over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number six to secure it. Trim away the excess batting from around the stitch line. Place your fabric for the rabbit's face over the batting and tape it in place. Do the same with your solvy if you're using it. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number seven to secure it. I've got white loaded into my machine, white thread loaded into my machine so that it doesn't show against my fabric. We're now going to trim away the excess fabric from around the edge of the stitch line. Don't worry about cutting the, the solvey. Making sure that you've got a thread that matches your fabric in your machine, you're now going to stitch round number eight and that's going to zigzag the raw edge and it's going to stop where we're going to add the ears. So making sure that the longest side is to the left and on the other ear the longest side is to the right. We're now going to align them each side of the um, zigzag stitching. So line this stitch line here up with this stitch line here, hard up against the zigzagging and then tape it in place. And now you're going to do the same with this ear, with this edge up against the zigzag edge here and this stitch line sitting on top of this stitch line here. And then tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number nine. And that's going to zigzag over both the ears and join them to the hoop. Load your thread colour for the satin stitch around the rabbit's head into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number 10. Load your white thread into your machine and then stitch round number 11 and that's going to give you the whites of the eyes and the highlight of the nose. Change your thread colour to whichever one you want for the colour of the eyes. I'm going with blue and then you're going to stitch round number 12. Load your black thread into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number 13 and that's going to do the black of the eyes. Load your thread colour for the satin stitch around the rabbit's mouth into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number 14. I'm going with pink on this. Load your thread colour for the rabbit's nose into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number 15. I'm going with black. We now come to add our backing. So you're going to place it face down so right side 
to right side and when you line these up I'm going to turn this to the side so that we can see what we're doing <laughs> you want to make sure that this edge here doesn't overlap this edge here you just want it to butt up and when it does you're then going to tape it in place and then we're going to tape this end in place as well I'm going to keep that out of the way of the stitch line the stitch line's just about there load your neutral thread colour into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number 16 and that's going to secure your backing to the hoop I've removed the tape that was securing my backing I'm now going to bring down the lining from the front over the top of the back or should I say the lining for the back and then tape it in place you're now going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 17 and that's going to do the stitch line on the left then it will leave a gap and then it will do a stitch line on the right and the gap is to allow you to turn it in a minute I've removed all the tape and pins from my hoop we're now going to free this from the hoop so separate your hoop pieces there's always one that hides isn't there all it remains for us to do now is to trim this up and then turn it so I've got my sharp fabric scissors and we're going to cut down here and then leaving a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around we're going to trim all the way around I'm just going to chop some of this off so that it doesn't get in the way Okay. Now I'm going to just gently trim off the corner, corners should I say, here and here, just to reduce the bulk. And I'm going to snip towards the stitch line on the curves and that's going to help us when we turn it out the right way because the corners will lay nice and flat. And now we're going to turn it out the right way so through the opening I'm just going to poke the corners smooth it out a little bit and then we're going to fold these over I'm going to press this before I go any further and then we're going to just do a little line of hand stitching to close up the lining here so I've just given this a light pressing 
I've started stitching uh, the opening closed and I'm just using whip stitching here. I'm using a slightly darker colour than I normally would in the hope that it shows up on camera. Now going to turn this out the right way, so just open it up and push everything through. We can now remove the soluble solvate from the face. going to add the cord to or the drawstrings should I say to the bag. I've got two pieces of cord they're two foot long each so that's 60 centimeters each and I've got a metal drinking straw and I'm going to show you a quick little trick here. You can use a plastic straw or you can indeed use a, um, a needle or safety pin if you want but I found this way really really quick so all I'm going to do is thread my cord and it's two mil cord that I'm using through the end of my straw just so that it's about to poke out and then I'm going to insert that into here and pull it through so that and then turn it over just so that it comes to the end and then poke that through the other side It doesn't matter if your cord comes out. And then pull your straw through. And that's your first cord threaded. So I'm going to do a little knot in the end of it. And we're going to do the same again, but starting this side this time. back down and tie this one off as well and there it is your cute little drawstring purse you enjoyed this stitch along if you did please give me a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos as soon as they're published do pop along to creative kiwis facebook group there's lots of ideas help and inspiration there for everybody and thank you very much for joining me there's a link to this design along with lots of other information such as where i get my supplies and some discount codes for you in the video description below mm -hmm.